how is the Steam Deck? I I've heard good things about it, but you know, it it's different to hear it from the perspective of a review and perspective of someone who's just you know generally using it. It has, honestly. I mean, I've said this before, but it has changed my gaming life, really. Because like, like a lot of people who work at computers, you don't want to be sat there in the evening. You, That's fair. you yeah. want to just chill. So sitting in bed or just on my sofa, just, yeah, it's nice. It is nice. And the fact that they could get it at a price point where it plays most things. I mean, yeah, you have to turn down the settings, but... Mm-hmm. I mean, you can play the brand new Spider-Man on it. What more do you want? I did see you post about that. That That's kind of crazy. And well, considering that it's also such a small screen, like, you can get away playing on fairly low settings. It's not, you know, you, it's, you're going to notice it if you're playing on, like, a 27 or you're playing on, like, a, a TV. You're going to notice being on, like, low. But surely it's not that big of a deal on something that small. No. Um, so I'll just load it up in the background if I can. And then I can, I can show you in real time if it will let me. Right, here we go. Just turn it's, that down a bit. Can we, right. can we do hardware in so, real time? Yeah, <laughs> it, it's just, it is honestly amazing that obviously there'll be stuff coming out and there, there are stuff coming out that will be more powerful but you also, you don't get any of the vendor support that you get from Valve. Mm-hmm. It probably won't have SteamOS. It won't have the price point that Valve have got on here. Like Valve said in one of their original interviews for the Steam Deck, that hitting the price point for it was, I believe they said, really painful. So, you know, they're, they're right near the edge of, I assume, then profitability for they're it. They're probably selling they're it like a console. It from... Like, I, where they... I... Yeah. Yeah, probably. So you sell it but, like, at cost or a bit under cost and make it up on game sales. Yeah, that is it. Because they, well, their cut is 30% of all sales until I think it hits like a million or two and mm. then it comes down a bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And I imagine they will make a lot more with it as well. Mm-hmm. Because even though like we joke about, oh, I'll get through my backlog on it. But you're just buying more games all the time to play on it. Like I have not I don't think I've cleared anything from my backlog because mm-hmm. I'm just going, Ooh, look, what does this work? Is yeah, it is absolutely amazing. Right, it's loading up now. So in a second I'll be able to show you. And it is it's absolutely crazy the fact that you could sit on a toilet and play Spider Man. Not that you want to. I mean I wouldn't wanna and it, Yeah. A bit gross. To play with your feet. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> Don't. You'll make me try it now. Right. Here we go. Okay. So, I'll go back a bit. There it is. It's, it's Spider-Man. Play, uh, playing Spider-Man. Oh, oh no. Uh, but there you go. Spider-Man. The brand new one. But the coolest feature about this, though, this is where it's not going to work. Right. Mm. I'm pressing the power button. Now it goes. It's saying bye-bye. Give it a sec, and then press the power button again. And it's not going to work, is it? Hold on. What's it? This is... Oh, oh, there it is. There it is. Look, oh, wow. we're back already. <laughs> I was going to say, this is why every onstage hardware demo is fake, because it's going <laughs> to break. <laughs> hey, but it worked. It worked, and it only took a couple seconds, and then you are back there in that exact moment. That is my favorite feature. So for anybody who's got any kind of, like, a busy life, mm. You, you just tap the button, put it uh, away, and the, the power use when it's on standby is, I think, only single digits per day. Mm-hmm. So you could pick it up two days later and still have loads of battery life left, and you're in the exact same spot. And that is, yeah, that is For amazing. anyone who's um, just listening right now, who's showing off putting the device into standby and then bring it back on and it just pretty much boots up like straight away, maybe like a second or two. Yeah, like a two, three seconds and then pop, it's there. It is incredible. It does sound really compelling. I'm curious to see like what's going to happen with sort of handheld PCs as a a market segment. Because I know there are like some devices starting to show up, but 
a lot of them are either really expensive or they're not really designed around gaming. There's not... there's I can't think of anything, at least off the top of my head, that is designed around gaming in the same way that the Steam Deck is. There's There are a couple now. So you've had mm-hmm. GDP win. Mm. G- GPD? I always GPD. get it wrong. Yeah, GPD, G- GPD, yeah. Um, they, they've been doing sort of handheld devices for quite a while, but a lot of theirs are sort of like a clamshell design, so it's mm. got a small keyboard on the bottom, and it's... So, more like I, the... I don't like the feel of that, because it's just a small laptop, and... Ah, uh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got, um, there's AYN, who I think it's the AYN Air, or something like that. They're doing one more like the Steam Deck. There's another company that's doing another one as well. Oh, and I've Valve seen this one. sort of... Valve have sort of reignited or even just, you know, set the actual starting fire on on these devices. And mm. I think there's going to be a lot more of them coming out over time because Valve are showing that there really is a genuine market for it. Well, I think the Switch is what first, like, revived the handheld gaming market because, mm. like, yeah. the 3DS, you know, it, it didn't do terribly, but... It was still like that lull in in handhelds. You had like you had the DS. The DS was an absolutely incredible device. Everyone loved it. Then you had things like the Vita, and it's just like no, it sort of like fades out. And you got like 3DS, and everyone's now if they want to play games, are doing it on their phone. But then the Switch came along, and the Switch showed that you can have an actual like, you know regular gaming experience in a handheld and people genuinely want that like whether it's on the bus or traveling or anything like that and then valve comes along and says why don't we just do it with the pc and you know people are already playing games on pc anyway i think that's more the point of it like because it is a p it is essentially mm. a full-blown pc i mean it has a desktop mode on it as well with kd plasma which mm. is you know really amazing but Valve ignited the, you know, the PC handheld, really, because it's, yeah, the, the Switch is, well, I, I own a Switch, and, you know, I do quite like it. Um, it's horrible to hold, though. I mean, it's, it's terrible. It makes your hands clam up, and it's, you know, it hurts to hold. Um, but the thing about the Steam Deck is not only are you able to play games on that, you mm. can play those same exact games with your saved game, without buying it again on a laptop or a desktop. And that is such a big added bonus that other mm-hmm. platforms don't really have. Microsoft is trying to do that with, like, you know, their cross-platform stuff. But Valve, like, Valve's cross, like, what's it called? Cloud, cloud, cloud saves, that's it. <laughs> like, that just, it works seamlessly. Yeah, so Microsoft are doing the Game Pass. Mm. So game, they've got the Xbox Game Pass and the PC Game Pass. And I think, genuinely, that is one of the, the biggest bits of competition, apart from the Epic Store, that Steam has, really. Mm. But even Microsoft seemed to get quite a bit on board with the Steam Deck as well, because they put out an official guide for getting Xbox Cloud Gaming on the Steam Deck. They've also been like announcing the verification for multiple of their games running on the Steam Deck. Oh, and I miss that. Yes. Yeah, they put out like there was a, a Steam Bow. So because they're a publisher on Steam and they have oh, a publisher page, right. they can do like news pu- pub like publisher news posts. And they basically put out, you know, a big post with loads of games in it saying, here's how our games work on the Steam Deck. And it's when you start seeing things like that, and you have to think this is a Linux handheld. And you've got these massive companies like Sony as well, putting, they put God of War on Steam Mm -hmm. and they were announcing how it was Steam Deck compatible. They just did the same with Spider-Man. It's, it's a completely different world, man. It's amazing. If we're going to be pedantic, I know someone's going to be, yes, I know the Switch is running BSD. That doesn't matter. It's a like proprietary version of BSD. This is like full linux it's just running kde you can use it like kde it doesn't matter yeah and that is the absolute beauty of it because apart from the obvious things like the steam client itself the steam deck is all open source Mm -hmm. 
like, like quite literally everything about it the drivers everything and that is and they were what they did with it is something that not many other vendors do especially in things like the console space and even in the laptop space a lot of the time is repairability mm. so before the sting deck was released valve did their own teardown video of here's what to do even though you shouldn't sort yeah. of thing and they're doing spare parts with iFixit, so you can repair it yourself if you want to. And that, as well, is a huge bonus point. 